is know what all is going differently for affliction. So let's start with our talents, okay? Alright. For the most part, the talents have been changed, like Malefic Grasp has been nerfed, but it's also not it's about the same. It's still the best single target. Much the same goes for Contagion. However, the entire level 15 row is pretty much even. Like, if you're in a fight with high movement, then you want to take Haunt in some cases, just because there's so many windows and it's got a lot of downtime where you can cast it, then move, and like 25 seconds later, just pop it again. Presto. It's also good on fights with, where you can reliably get the buff off a lot and just constantly reset the spell. But... That's another thing we're looking at. At least it doesn't cost a soul shard anymore like it did on PTR. Um, Writhe in Agony has been has had its stacks reduced, but its damage is basically the same because of the buffs that we have received to Agony. What, what this means is Writhe in Agony can act, is the, the best talent we have on two target. People some will sometimes say Malefic Grass, but not really. It's a single target. Rather than Agony, I personally prefer it because I don't like the drain folk, the heavy drain focus playstyle that Malefic Grasp offers. I personally prefer the movement that Rather than Agony offers. That being said, this is pro like the build you see here: Rather than Agony, Absolute Corruption, Soul Harvest, and Siphon Life is probably what I want to be using on most fights that I play Affliction on into Sargeras. That being said, Phantom Singularity does have its uses, and the main use that I'm happy with is the fact that it offers us Burst. Like, Burst AoE is a good thing to have in some of the fights like Har in the Icon fights like Harjitan or Madame Sazine. That being said, also, Sow the Seeds is also probably the best talent that you can take on Harjitan, because a lot of the ants are stacked, and you can use this to reliably proc around the consumption. Soul Harvest is good on Hard of Tan if you're like just multi-dotting thing the little bastards with uh, absolute corruption and then just popping uh, AC and agony, popping that and then tunneling it and uh, tunneling all that increased damage into the boss. But that remains to be seen. Now, there's also things that have changed with our stat weights, namely the fact that we favor haste. Like, in multiple target situations right now as Affliction, you're basically using a similar stat build to Demonology Warlocks, with high, ha with basically just haste over everything. Even, still in Cleave, Mastery and Haste are just about equal, regardless. Like, with single target, you want Mastery, but Haste isn't far behind it. In fact, I'd still safely say just gem and enchant everything for haste, and if you're on single target, like, have a few mastery gems and mark the trained soldier. But since, it's, like, the two best specs in my, like, from what I've noticed, and I believe Aklon and I were talk, Aklon and I were talking at length about this in one of his videos, Demonology and Affliction will be the most realistic Comp, uh, spec composition for any for all warlocks they're going through progression once any content become, goes on farm then you play destruction because you'll actually be able to justify the fact that destruction doesn't have really anything to deal with movement aside from like conflagrate on the move rain of fire on the move and um what is it dimensional rip you can cast Havoc on the move, but it has a cool, but it has like, I think like a 25 second cooldown, something like that. It's not a very reasonable thing to cast on the move. You're better off just pre-casting Havoc. You're better off preemptively Havocing, which even then that's a bad idea in some cases, considering Havoc's cooldown. But I digress. Demonology is in a good place for sing for anything single target. And with burst AOE, in which case most fights in uh, Tomb of Sargeras, with the exception of Goroth, really every fight has potential for Affliction to shine on because every fight has in, has a lot of movement, and Affliction does better than Demonology and Destruction on movement. And any fight that you would normally play a Demonology role on, Affliction's not far behind. In fact, realistically, I believe it's better. Because Demonology is one of those weird specs that sims higher than everything else in the game. But when you actually go to practice, Demonology is absolutely terrible. 
Unless you're like a beast at it or you're using the main build, which doesn't even matter what stats you're running with. That being said, I believe that Affliction is going to see a lot of use for haste because we're going to be using Demonology as a spec and it's going to be a spec we're going to have to get used to playing. So a trinket like Charm of the Ri Rising Tide is going to be really good. I still fully anticipate Warlocks keeping onto Whispers in the Dark, but not really once you look at stuff like the Tarnished Sentinel Medallion, which is going to be incredibly good for Affliction and Destruction. And then you use uh, Charm of the Rising Tide, which is just going to be the best trinket for Warlocks that I can really think of off the top of my head. Only downside to this trinket is it's it gives you this really massive haste buff. But you only have 10 seconds with that buff, because it spends half of its duration, half the, tr the trinket's ICD, well, it's on 1 minute and 30 second cooldown. Half of the trinket's time that it's up is ramping, so the last 10 seconds is going to be, like, the most heavy thing. Really, this trinket is going to be really useful during heroism, it's going to be useful on heroism during the opener, and, like, during multiple phases of the fight, since it's got a 1 minute 30 second cooldown. The only thing you have to note, remember with on these trinkets is if you don't pop them on cooldown, they're losing game, they're losing DPS to trinket procs. And on these trinkets tend to do better, like Warlocks, we don't have very high actions per minute, so our proc rate's generally bad. And if it's something with uh, ICD, like low proc rate ICD, we can just look at that trinket not proccing for o well over a minute. So, yeah. As far as gearing goes, um, basically, any, just be after anything that has haste and mastery and high amounts of both. As long as it doesn't have like versatility on it, you're bad, you're, you're, you don't want it. If it's got versatility, don't get it, but if it doesn't have versatility, then just get it. Um, crit isn't as, vi as valuable for us anymore, actually. In fact, if I remember correctly at least, um, actually let me check the weapon first. Yeah, we have winnowing here, which actually devalues crit. And considering that three of the best relics that we get, which are all perdition relics in this raid, come from Desolate Host with the Grimacing Highborn Skull, which is a perdition relic for your shadow slot, and the Tears of the Maiden, which is a blood slot perdition relic. Now, what does this mean exactly? Of course, Kill Jaden drops the highest eye level relic for winnowing, which makes it devalue crit even more. On the bad side, it doesn't really do much for your damage aside making your item level look pretty. So really the best really the best relics that you get come from Desolate Host and the Maiden of Vigilance, which is a great thing for Warlocks because now we don't have to go back to Trial of Valor to farm for Perdition Relics off of Helia. Um, basically the Diabolical the Diabolic Robes will be your best in slot if and only if you can't get a hold of the Master Harvester. If you get a hold of the Master Harvester, you run Soul Harvest on everything because it's going to lead to so much more damage in ridiculous windows if you're running Contagion builds. Really, the best two legendaries if you're running Soul Conduit are the Master Harvester and the Power Portable Tentress, and you just run a build like this. Or this if you're feeling lucky, or that. It doesn't really matter. But the Master Harvester and the Power Cord of Lethendris are the best legendaries for Soul Conduit builds. For Siphon Life builds, which would be something like this, or that, or whatever. Let's just go with something like this. Um, you're going to want the Hood of Eternal Disdain and the Master Harvester. Note that with Soul Conduit builds, you're already you're relying on RNG, so really you don't need the Hood of Eternal Disdain for Soul Conduit. You really just want the belt because it's just double dipping into the proc of Soul Harvest. In fact, giving it well, the belt is basically every eighth UA you cast, you get a free shard back. And for Soul Conduit, every shard you spend is 25% chance to be refunded because with the math behind Soul Conduit, it's actually a 25% chance. Destruction, on the other hand, it's closer to 20, even with the nerfs. 
So basically, what does this mean for your gear? Well, it means a couple things. Main things you're going to want to look at are like Sisters of the Moon, you get the best in slot shoes for affliction demonology. You get the slippers of enduring vigilance. You also get the Tarnished Sentinel Medallion and a ring that's complete shit. For Harjitan, you get the Ravenous Devotees Bracers, which are pretty are your best slot bracers unless you have Strat and Sleepless Shackles. You also get your, tier, your well, glove tier piece. And a Shadow Relic, if you uh, aren't lucky with Perdition Relics, you can just get the two Shadow Damage Relics and Winnowing. You also get the seal band of serv well, Scale Band of Servitude, which is your best ring, one of your best rings for Affliction, and the second best ring that you get, and the next best ring that you get will be off Kill Jaden. Now, let's get back to, on track. Your, your tier pieces are going to be dependent on what legendaries you're running. So, let's say you're running with uh, the Master Harvester. Then you want the shoulders, you want the belt, yeah you do want the cape in this case, actually no you don't, you want a different cape for this, so. but you'll want the legs, and if I remember right you'll want the helmet. And then your off piece will be Master Harvester. And this is in my case because I like using the Master Harvester with Stratons. But for optimization, you want the power cord. However, most pe some people aren't, don't, won't get lucky with that, so they'll have to go with the Strife Fridden Cinch. Which, in my opinion, has better stats than the power cord by a mile and a by a long shot. So, yeah. Um. And yeah, basically, the relics that kill Jaden drops aren't really that good because drain soul rel damage relics aren't even aren't that good. And the trinket that he drops is really good. Like the trinket and the ring are the best pieces. If you're using like your gloves as an off piece, then the gloves of furtive oppression are just better because of the item level and intellect increase. But as long as you're aware that the Tome of Unraveling Sanity is a good trinket if you want to use it to like just cleave ads when they're about to die, you just pop it. If the ads dies during the effect, you gain like a 12 second, but like an over a 12 second buff of like 3,100 critical strike, which is really good because it's the buff already lasts for 12 seconds whenever something dies, or rather when the effect ends if the target dies, you'll still get a 12 second crit buff regardless. But if the target dies as it's put on them, you get 12 seconds plus for any th amount of time remaining on the effect. So if it dies instantly, you have like a shitload of time left. So it's a really huge buff, and which can all, which also scales pretty well with AC. Still, the best stats that you want is an Affliction Walk or Haste Mastery. Crit's still good. You want to still have a lot of crit, but it's not as important. Now, if you're not lucky with the Master Harvester, then you run with Hood of Eternal Disdain and uh, the Reap and Sower Stratons. Personally, I'm never going to get, I'm probably never going to see that cape drop, so I'm just going to stick with what I have. And the only thing that you change up is the Diabolic Robe. It's the only thing you change. For your shoes, really, it's Mistress, uh, it's the Sisters of the Moon's uh, shoe piece. And that's your best. Either that or you go with Goroth for the mastery. And that's pretty much all you need to look out for on this. Like really, it, like Affliction's legendaries are tuned in such a way where they're all incredibly close, so it really doesn't matter what legendaries you get, as long as you get orange texted items. Like, for example, uh, Pride As is still really good. Pride As is actually very, very good for a legend, uh, legendary stat stick. 
And another good one, if I can find it here, is the Pillars of the Dark Portal. It actually sims are relatively high for Affliction. Mainly because no other piece of gear that we have gives us that much crit, until Tumis or Garrus, of course. But it also gives you haste and mastery, and a relatively decent amount of mastery. The problem is the pants are bugged, so that's always a bad thing. Now let's get into the talent builds and what you're going to want to be looking at. In fact, the Flickfin has a lot of choice right now, so really it's up to the it's like really down to the player to decide what they want. Like Death's Embrace is going to probably see a lot of use on let's see here. Kill Jaden and potentially the Desolate Host, but maybe, but mainly kill Jaden due to the fact, due to his execute phase that you really just need to get out of or you die. Okay, another good talent build is like Haunt, still really good, and it's good for high movement. So like on fights like Fallen Avatar, you can run with Haunt or Ride in Agony because you got don't have enough downtime for Malefic Grasp. Um. Absolute Corruption is probably going to be the best once you have the four piece. It's like Contagion isn't going to lift a glad a candle to AC on any on multiple targets. Which if you're playing Affliction right, you should always be multi dotting anyway. Um, Phantom Singularity is probably going to be the talent most people run with because a lot of people don't have because people have a lot of problems maximizing Soul Harvest. For the life of me, I don't know why. You just got to be good at multi dotting. Uh, Phantom Singularity is probably going to be one of the most sought, used talents that we have, and that's a good th and it's for and for good reason. It gives us burst, for both single target and AOE, mostly AOE bursts. But Phantom Singularity mechanically is just a huge single target dot. It still doesn't hit as much as uh, Unstable Affliction with Contagion, but it's still really good. In fact, I think the most optimal single target build that we have. Is right is malicious grasp, contagion, bam singularity, and siphon life for soul conduit. Like both siphon life and soul conduit are within Simcraft's margin of error, so they're maybe like what like one to two percent behind each other. In fact, it's another thing we can talk about destruction. So of F and Destro have both received a five percent nerf on this patch, but destruction's still like maybe one to two percent behind affliction and just about any scenario. So basically what it gets at is if you love playing destruction and you have legendaries for destruction, then you play destruction. If you have if you love demonology and have legendaries for demonology, play demonology. If you have legendaries for affliction and you're good at affliction, then play affliction. The Warlock specs right now are essentially the most equal they've been since that one time in Cataclysm, and I can't remember which patch it was, but all three of the Warlock specs were even, you could just play whatever. Um, oh lord, I'm trying to think. Also, I'm planning on doing, making some collabor some collab videos with the Aqualon and maybe a couple other warlocks potentially in the future. Uh, if you all like the sound of that idea, leave a comment below. And if you're looking more for more warlock related topics, check out the Akalon and check out Pyromancer Sargeras. Those two are really good. Another person you can check out is Terran. He does a lot of stuff in the Warlock Discord and he makes videos. He's a really really chill guy. He's got a very dry sense of humor and I like and I like that about him. Uh, as far as that goes for now, guys, I'm just going to hop off for now, and I'll make another video for Affliction again soon. Alright, peace.